Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. I'm uh, happy when people are alert. Don't make me talk alone as if I'm the only one here. Learn to manage your microphone, or if you're in a noisy place, you look for somewhere quiet for you to attend the lesson. So here, uh, we looked at uh, the different methods we use, and we saw one. If we want to get a soluble salt, soluble, uh, you must get a, you must get what? Soluble salt. Huh? Uh, dilute. Dilute acid? Uh, dilute. Okay. Yes, dilute acid. And then any metal that we want to prepare. That is good. We saw that the way, if you want to get the salt, if you want any salt this way, we use uh, the salts that are prepared by this way. There are those ones that higher than higher than lead. Is it higher than lead? But lower than no. calcium. Cali so we expect to see below calcium we see magnesium. Mm -hmm. Which other salt? Uh, Below magnesium, we have what? So, these are the, some of the salts here magnesium, zinc, and iron. Okay? Those ones that are uh, below calcium yes. but higher than lead in the reactivity series. So, if you want to get them, because they have the possibility of displacing. <laughs> Someone is shouting here. Ruben. Yes. Ruben, if you are not talking, I ask you to, I need to mute your microphone. So those salts are there. The ones that are below this. So we have magnesium, zinc, and iron. Those are some of the salts there. Then we looked at another way of preparing these salts. That is what and what. Which other method do you look at? Getting it from what? An oxide. That's method two. If you want to get an insoluble salt, we use uh, here. Uh, here we have the second method. You get a, an oxide of a metal. You, re, you react it with the acid. When you react the two, you will get a, a solution that has a salt that you want. An example of those, apart from these three, which is magnesium, zinc, and iron, uh, you can also get the same salts using their oxide. But what matters is, if they give you these salts, don't waste time looking for their oxides. You can just get a metal, put in any acid that you want. Then also, if you want other oxides, method two, preparation of soluble salts, you get a metal oxide and add dilute acid in them. Now, an example of this, if you want copper 2 sulfate, copper 2 sulfate, because copper cannot displace, copper cannot displace uh, hydrogen from the acid, it is far below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So you find that if you use it as oxide, at least acid has something it can get from copper. That is the oxide to form the water molecule. Then the other the copper can take the sulfate that the acid has. Now, here, the general procedure remains. Put the little acid gently warm. That is our acid. We add the copper oxide bit by bit while stirring. We looked at the general procedure. Then also filter off. You know the reason as to why we filter off. We filter off to remove the, the excess oxide. Then saturate by evaporating. We know the reason. Allow it to cool and then you filter wash off and then dry. The main important part is the equation of reaction. This. So other metals prepared by this will include magnesium chloride. You get magnesium oxide and hydrochloric acid. Mm, nit copper nitrate. Those are some of the salts there. Now also we can get a soluble salt from the insoluble metal carbonates. Insoluble metal carbonates. An example is if you want lead, lead nitrate, you get lead carbonate, and which acid? You want lead nitrate, you have lead carbonate. Which acid do you use? 
Yes. Nitric acid. Nitric acid. Thank you very much. So that is the acid you get. The first thing is to pour the acid in the beaker and warm gently. Then add lead carbonate, a little, that is a little at a time. And then you allow the carbon dioxide gas to go off. So you see now equation here. Uh, we have nitric acid, carbon dioxide gas given off and this water remaining. Now add the carbonate and seal in excess. That's when the normal the oral acid is used up. That's why we add lead carbonate in excess. Filter off to get the colorless filtrate, evaporate, we saturate by evaporating, cool, wash. So now we see that the procedure. The procedure is almost repeating like itself. It? Who is like shouting? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, we see that the general procedure is almost repeating itself. So if you know the general procedure, you can prepare any soluble salts as long as you know what you are going to react to get what? The salt. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, so there are many salts you can get through this method. As long as the salt is soluble, you can get it is oxide. You can get the metal. You can get uh, it is carbonate and combined with an acid. As long as you can write a full balanced equation, go on and prepare the salt. These numbers are always in section C, paper two chemistry. For those in senior two, you have not seen a paper two, serious paper two paper. But if you find it there, those are the common questions they ask in section C. You have actually not C, but I think it's section B, where you choose about two numbers to do. So you may find this is a number that can take about seven marks. The square bar you can prepare lead to nitrate salt. Then they don't disclose for you what you are going to use. So it is you to decide either you are going to use a carbonate or you are going to use a, uh, what? Now, if you want to lead nitrate, can you use lead metal? Yes. If you want lead nitrate salt, can someone use lead metal? No. No. What is the reason? The reason? The first part the question, Kalito. If you want lead nitrate, you are going to use mm -hmm. nitric acid. Can you use nitric acid with a metal of lead? No. Mm -hmm. The reason? It's because mm. um, hy hydrogen is mm -hmm. more reactive than lead. Thank you very much. So chemistry rotates around the reactivity series. If you know the reactivity series, check the periodic table. If you do not understand the periodic table, uh, we shall also get time and pass through it as you, when we finish this. And then I will show you most of the common things and questions that come through the periodic table and the tricks you can answer those questions. But for now, concentrate on the reactivity series. Is it clear? So yes. if, you, if you want to know that something is more reactive, you look for ways of getting the reactivity series too close to you. For you to understand chemistry, no one, how to write a well-balanced equation. Two, that reactivity series, can something display something from a reaction? That is all. Then secondly, uh, thirdly, use the periodic table. You will know how things react. For example, in the periodic table, they might tell you that when you are going down the periodic table of group one elements, the more reactive those elements become. Like sodium, Potassium is below sodium in the reactivity series, more reactive than what? Also, there are other metals that are more reactive than sodium, potassium, I mean, down there. So, 
That is the way you should look at. Now here, we are looking at a more soluble salt, like here, lead cannot displace hydrogen from this and takes away the nitrate. No, it can never happen because it is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So you can't prepare lead nitrate by using lead solid or lead metal. You can either use it as oxide or the carbonate because the H or the hydrogen of this acid has something it can get from the what? The lead. Then you follow the general procedure. You first start with acid and warm. Add lead to carbonate when effervescence occurs. Keep adding, effervescence is the, like evolution of a gas from the solution that you are making. Now, keep adding the carbonate till when the oil acid reacts. No more effervescence occurs. That means the oil acid has reacted. Uh, filter off to get the filtrate, then evaporate. But this is saturation. Saturate by evaporating, you heat to a certain temperature. When you see the crystals start forming, use the rod, insert it in the solution, and try to see if the crystals form. At that stage, you stop, cool. When you cool, the crystals will be formed inside the solution. So for you to remove the water element, you, you, you filter it off. After filtering, you can wash to remove impurities. Then you dry it in an oven or between filter papers or under what? Sunshine. Those are the kind of drying criteria you use. Sunshine, oven, or filter paper. So that is the way. If not, you can get also the soluble salt. This is the way you prepare soluble salts. Four methods you have. You can choose from those four and get your correct answer. So I don't expect people to be failing this. Now you can also use the hydroxides of this metal. Hydroxides. Any metal like lead hydroxide, zinc hydroxide. Get the hydroxide and use the same procedure. Same procedure. Acid first. Add the hydroxide little by little until excess. Uh, or when you know the whole acid is used up. Filter off, evaporate by saturating. Cool. Wash. And then dry. The most, and then the other part is writing the equation of reaction. You must now to come up with a full balance equation. If you can be either asked how to derive the ionic equation from here. So someone should not tell you that it doesn't know how to write an ionic equation at this level. Okay. Those who started with us, we can now derive yes. those equations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then, now, if we finish this, there are two ways of, if you want to get this, lab preparation of salts whose carbonates, oxides, hydroxides are insoluble. That was our main point of discussion today, isn't it? Now, this is our main point of discussion today, preparation of insoluble Salts. Now, when you look at these salts, if you want to get insoluble salts, an example, do we have nitrates that don't dissolve? Nitrates. Lead nitrate, potassium nitrate. Yeah. So all nitrates dissolve. You can't prepare them using NMS that we are going to discuss below. All are soluble. So if you want to get uh, salts of nitrates, you use the other methods above. Okay. Secondly, would we have chloride that are insoluble? We looked at chloride that are insoluble. We inc include one. Lead one. Lead two chloride. Okay. Which other one? Silver chloride. Silver, Silver chloride. chloride. Uh, thirdly, mercury chloride. People in, the, people in the class, we are going to prepare salt to you people. When the question comes, just pass. Sulfates. Sulfates, which Barium one? Sulfate. Barium sulfate. And what? Yes? Lead to sulfate. Lead to sulfate. Thank you very much. Those are the only two insoluble sulfates. What about carbonates? 
What about carbonates? Uh -huh. All carbonates are insoluble. All sodium, potassium. Thank you very much. All carbonates are insoluble. All of them. So you can use these methods we are going to describe below to get these salts. Except, except salts of what? Of group one elements, which is ammonia, which has valence one. Uh huh. Uh, potassium and sodium and uh, sodium. Sodium ammonium carbonate is soluble. Uh, potassium carbonate is soluble. Sodium carbonate is soluble. So you can't prepare them. All the rest: copper carbonate, uh, zinc carbonate, magnesium carbonate. All the salts are insoluble. So this is the way you can prepare these salts. We are going to look at the general procedure. Then from the general procedure, we shall pick ways of getting it. Now, there are two ways you can get these salts. These salts, uh, these ones, we have looked at them. The salts can be prepared by, no, these ones here, you can get titration. We shall also look at the titration method of getting it. Now, if you want to get these salts, uh, this is the one for, this method is for preparing these soluble salts of potassium, sodium, and ammonium. I want to first keep this one, then we shall look at it last when we come back in the second session. But uh, here, allow me go to this preparation of insoluble salts. Now, <clears throat> if you want to get an insoluble salt, this is the method you use. One, you double decompose, double decomposition, or what we call precipitation. I was happy with someone who answered the question we had at first, uh, number one of our test. The question was reading, uh, was it number one or number two? Okay, the question was reading, describe, is it the precipitation of calcium water? Write the ionic equation for the precipitation of calcium carbonate. Now, precipitation, I think that person understood that part. Now, we are going to look at this method of precipitation, bringing out solids from two soluble salts. So now here we are seeing this. In this method, two soluble salts, two soluble salts, you get two soluble salts. That's when you can, when you add them, they give you the other bit that is insoluble. So two soluble salts are mixed to form two new salts by exchange of radicals. We know radicals. Radicals are many. We have sulfate radicals, we have chloride radicals. So if you want to get a salt, you get two salts that are soluble to give you one that is insoluble. An example, if you want silver chloride, silver chloride, one can use sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a soluble salt. And then silver what? Silver nitrate. That is one example of a soluble salt. So if I add this, since sodium is higher than silver, it can take away the nitrate. So we shall form sodium nitrate plus silver one chloride. Now this silver chloride will be a white precipitate. A white precipitate. Precipitate. Now this precipitate, once you filter, our filter will be sodium nitrate, and then the residue will be silver chloride. So this silver chloride is the one we get. After getting it, we, after filtering, we dry the same way under sunshine in an oven or between filter papers. So here, they are telling us that one of the new salt form is a soluble salt and one is insoluble. That it appears as a precipitate. Okay? So precipitates are many, we have blue, we have red, we have all sorts of precipitates. So here, the precipitate is filtered off 
unwashed and then dried. Precipitate is a formation of solids when solutions are mixed. Then also precipitate is a solid formed when two or more solutions are mixed. So both of them give a definition of that precipitation or precipitate. So whichever word you use, uh, you can get. So example is this, preparation of barium sulfate. We know barium sulfate is an insoluble salt. We react barium nitrate, that is one of the soluble salts, and then sodium sulfate. We shall get sodium nitrate and then barium sulfate. Barium sulfate being insoluble, you can filter off and then dry. So put the solution of barium nitrate in the beaker, add a solution of sodium sulfate to it, a white precipitate of barium sulfate appears immediately. Filter off, wash with distilled water. Why do we wash off to remove impurities? Then dry the precipitate under sunshine in an oven or between filter papers. Then you write the equation of reaction. Now, can we derive? You look at this procedure, it is as short as this. This one is more easier than the one of soluble salt. Just get two solutions that are soluble. Two solutions that are soluble. In water. Add the two together. After adding, you form one insoluble. Add them together. Together. And then you filter off. After filtering, you dry. Then the next is the equation of reaction. As short as this. Can we fail to get insoluble salts? Ruben? Ruben? Yes, teacher. Can we fail to get <coughs> insoluble salts? No. Mm -hmm. Shelly. Shelly. Uh, we are going to have a one minute break and then we come back for the second session. Just as this one goes off after one.